We made it. And you don't know this, but my listeners will know this. I suck at hitting the record button. <laughs> and I screwed up the whole timer. <laughs> we'll edit it out and it will look perfect. So anyways, I just always have to say that and tell them myself. But I, have, I'm ex- first of all, thank you for joining me to talk to me. I've been... I will openly admit I've been stalking you on different places and like seeing you talk. (laughs) And so I think it's important though, and we talked a little bit before this, is that I like to get different perspectives. I always say Mm. my channel is about different perspectives. I always say I like to just kind of be, call it like I see it, whatever I see it, I'm going to say that. And if you don't like it, I don't care. That's just kind of how I roll. And so it only made sense for me during this week, during everything that's going on, And listening to some of the things that you're saying and how people are reacting to it, (laughs) to have you on to really share more about Nebraska football, because we know when you have a team, I'm a Texas fan. I know everything there is to know about Texas. I'm a Colorado fan. I know everything there is to know about Colorado. You don't know a lot about other teams. And so I wanted to really just give you a chance to share out with us what we should know, what we should be thinking about, things like that. So thank you. Um, and then before we get into that, I'll let you introduce yourself, tell us whatever you want us to know, and then we will get talking about Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I'm Chancellor Bruinton, as you see my name below. Um, I used to play at Nebraska about two years ago. Um, and since then, I've been working at a radio station. So this is kind of what I do. Um, I have a YouTube on the side, uh, Chancellor Bruinton official that I just started up. Um, so I basically just break down film on there. Then the radio, I have two separate shows, What's Bruin with Chancellor Bruinton, my name. And then I have another one called The Locker Room with me and Mikey Daniels. So um, yeah, so this type of thing is is what I do and what I enjoy. So I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, I love this. Can I ask a question? Um, yes. When you were at Nebraska, did you go to the volleyball games? I went to one. How was it? It was interesting. I mean, it's like, it's uh, it's not like any other school I've ever been to. It's like, uh, I mean, I'm sure you've seen when they packed out Memorial Stadium. Yep. Um, it's, it's just, it's a different vibe. I mean, they just, obviously Nebraska just lost, uh, yesterday to SMU and volleyball and, you know, being number two in the country, but the, the vibe here for all sports, I mean, Nebraska fans are some of the best in the nation. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, as a Texas fan, Texas volleyball, I, I, we beat Nebraska in the championship, but you know, I'll leave that where it's at, but I agree. (laughs) Nebraska is a very, very, I went to, I've been to Nebraska a couple of times, a couple of times for interviews and a couple of times just because, and I always make sure I go to a volleyball game just Mm. because it, nothing beats it. So anyways, no one's here to listen to us talk about volleyball. So huge matchup this week. Um, I think that no matter who you ask, everybody is interested in this game. Everyone is talking about this game some way, shape, or form. Everybody has thousands of opinions about this game. But I wanted to hear your perspective on Nebraska because I don't think we've heard a lot of, like, Nebraska information and thoughts that you have. So, as usual, I've prepared questions. Everybody should know this by now. You have the questions. There's no tricking going on here. And so I just wanted to hear more about Nebraska. I wanted to know, like, what do you think when you think about this game? What do you think about, like, what is the first thing that comes to mind where you're like, this is a key that I'm thinking about that I'm going to be focused on watching this game? Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind with Nebraska is just simply, it's just a quarterback battle. That's how I see it. Um, I think it's Mm. Dylan versus Shador. Well, it's Dylan versus Dylan and Shador versus Shador. So um, I think, uh, you know, if I think if Dylan executes, uh, you know, around a 85 to you know 90% rate, uh, then Nebraska wins by, you know, at least a score um, because I expect Shador to execute. I, it's not a, I don't I don't necessarily think it's a thing where, you know, Shador is not going to go out there and play good. I mean, we've seen him against Oregon last year, even in even when, in rough scenarios, you know, when the O-line doesn't hold up, he's still playing, you know, at a high level, you know. So um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. I think about uh, how Dylan's going to perform, you know, 90,000 first night game. Uh, as a as a former Husker, like you know, I played in some big games. I played in the Nebraska Michigan game. I played at the at Oklahoma when we played them, and those are pretty big games, right? But uh, you know, the past ten years, I don't think we've had this big of a build up. You know, obviously, Coach Prime, Travis Hunter, all the all the different aspects to this. So that's that's what I'm most most uh, curious to see is how he responds to this. And I expect him to respond well and, and even perform better than he did last week. Yeah. What is, 
what is the talk around the program? Like how, how, how is the program feeling? You know, sometimes you can just kind of see like, is there a lot of talk? Is there, is there high energy? Is it kind of just like business as usual? How do you, what do you feel like it, it, it feels like around the program? Yeah. So I know what they're trying to make it feel like. They're trying to make it feel like it's every other week. You know, usually, so the tradition for Nebraska, when you play Colorado is you don't wear anything black or gold in the facility. Um, and it's like, you know, you just wear red that week, but something coach rule has done. He's like, yeah, we're not even going to focus on that. We're just going to treat it like another week. But the problem with that is everyone has these things. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Bleacher Report already put out a post of Makai Gaber, uh, one of our linebackers, talking about Sh- Shador and Dan and uh, Dylan Raula. So, like, it's it's inevitable that guys are going to see this unless you live under a rock, right? So um, th- this type of stuff is just going to get out. Um, the best way to do it as a coach and for, like, leaders on the team is just to manage it, you know, and to make sure, like, throughout the week, you know, let it get to you a little bit. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say like, don't let it get to you. No, let it get to you. Let it, the preparation for each game is the same, right? There's a standard set, right? You don't, you don't prepare different for, you know, you don't prepare different for UTEP than you prepare for Colorado, right? There's a standard set, but I'll tell you what, when you get inside the stadium, we just go out there for warm ups. just warm ups. Like the energy is just, even on Friday, the city's going to be packed. There's already, I can already tell there's people in town already today and it's Wednesday. So yeah, Just it's going to be, it's going to be one of them gays. Can I ask you like, again, I didn't prepare for this, but like as a player going into this game and you know the importance, you know, all the things, even if you've acted like all week, you haven't seen it, you haven't heard, like, you know. Do, how does it feel like at what point in the game do you say this is just a game like yes this is still our rival but like the game has started the ball has kicked off right all it, you're there now it's about you know getting into your plays coming in and off the field like at what right. point do you kind of just lock in and say this is a football game yeah so another component to what you just said is a night game as well so nebraska night games are kind of like known across college football to be one of the better atmospheres. So like you're talking about, like, you know, just the fans in general are going to add a different component. So I would okay. say right, right when the first kickoff happens, right. Whether you're on offense or defense, you know, the worst, the worst for like a, a player is when uh, like I was an offensive player. So I'd always have to wait to the defense. Like, you know, if, if we kick off first, right. I had to oh, wait yeah. till the defense gets a stop to go on. And so your nerves are going like the whole time. Like, so I would just say the first time you go on the field, everything just goes silent. Um, so okay. that's the, that's the moment for me. I love that. So tell us about Nebraska's strengths. Like when you look at Nebraska, Obviously, you saw them play against UTEP. My assumption is, though, that wasn't the first time you you had an assumption or an opinion about what they were doing. What are some strengths that Nebraska has that you either don't feel like people are talking about or that you just people need to know this is actually an area of focus and strength? (laughs) Yeah, I think I think we know as Nebraska and, and traditionally their defense is really well rounded, um, really strong up front. Uh, two two beasts of human beings and uh, Nash Nash Hutchmaker and Ty Robinson, um, great great guys off the field, great guys on the field. So you got those guys. Um, you got a good defense behind them, right? Um, I think the the one piece of this team that we're kind of seeing evolve is the offense. And obviously it, it's too it's too early to jump the gun and say, you know, this is going to be, you know, a, a great offense. Right. But I, I expect them to be good at least. Right. Last year. Okay. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into it, but. A lot of people like to bring up, you know, Nebraska and CU last year, but the state of the state of that offense, I mean, it was a, it was a bunch of guys like just trying to figure it out, like you know, and a coach that really didn't have any uh, identity in what he wanted to call or could call because of the personnel on the field. I mean, you you look at the receiver core, you had like you had Mar- Marcus Washington, and Alex Bullock. Alex Bullock has never played before. Marcus Washington. Um, you know, as a, it being the only threat there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now you got a whole different depth, whole different squad. I mean, we saw last week, I believe they played, uh, they played 20, 
I believe it was 23 guys in the on the first uh, first three drives. So oh, that yeah. Right. So so when I and, and that's the identity of both these both the offense and defense. You know, defense they they play about 20 to 22 guys in a, in a real Big Ten game, and offense is creating that same kind of identity. Um, just being able to build a system and plug in guys. And, and that's where that's where like you, you know, you get into the Bamas, the Georgias, the Clemsons. That's how you build these type of programs. I 100 percent agree. And what are some what is a weakness or what are some things that when you look at this matchup, you go mm, don't really love that. It'll be interesting to see how we match up. Yeah. So the first thing that comes to mind is um, being disciplined, containing Shador in the pocket. Uh, we've had we've had trouble in the past making sure that uh, quarterbacks that we keep our contains on the outside, making sure quarterbacks don't get that edge. And what I'm seeing on tape and what I've, and what I, I mean, what everyone kind of knows um, about Shador's game. He's such a he's obviously a prolific passer, but um, he's he has good pocket presence. But I think he's best as a as a quarterback outside the pocket mm-hmm. when he's creating plays and 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 uh, letting the receivers, you know, uh, we call it scramble drill, you know, just make, just, you know, ad lib on routes. Right. Yeah. Um, we see, you know, Jimmy Horn, they, they seem to have a really good connection and he's a dangerous receiver. So um, we saw that North Dakota uh, state game, um, him get outside the pocket. And that's when a lot of big plays happen. So um, getting home um, for the uh, getting home, meaning just uh, getting in the QB's face, whether it's a sack or a hurry or just altering the timing of Shador will be the biggest thing I could see. That would probably be the question mark for me. Um, and then I don't think Colorado runs the ball well, although, I mean, they could throw in some wrinkles. I think the the next thing would just be tackling on the perimeter. That's something they didn't do a good job of last year. And I don't think, I don't think uh, the athletes that, Colorado has I don't think Nebraska's gonna face those type of athletes anytime again in this year I think it would be like they're this will be the the number one um so yeah just tackling okay I think you tweeted today um keep the ball away from 12 and 5 or don't let 5 and 12 yeah. touch the ball or whatever you said <laughs> Like it, it seems so simple, right? Just like don't right. don't allow those guys to go off. I love that. Have you? So I, I want to say this because I know that people listening to this that are Colorado fans are going to say this. Everybody, not everybody, lots of Colorado fans say the teams we're playing don't even know the guys that we have. They don't even know the firepower that we have. They don't even know our team. Have you spent time looking at Colorado's football team to actually assess them? Beyond some things that you might have saw in North Dakota State, like, did you take any time to, like, just actually look at their roster besides what you saw? Or were you focusing on the things you saw at North Dakota State? And this isn't a trick question. I'm just curious. No, yeah. Yeah, so – when I like look at a team, I kind of look at it like as a former player. So I'm like looking at them like, um, yeah, everyone's talking about, you know, they got this backup kid and whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're in, you know, 11 personnel or however many skill players, you, you usually only have three receivers on the field. So yeah. people are saying, you know, there's a bunch of depth. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. But usually there's only three guys on the field. Right. So we're going to see those. <laughs> Yeah, there's only one one of those. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I look at it from a from a place of like who's being productive, you know, who's executing, who's doing their job. And then, you know, uh, Car- Colorado fans are interested. I'm sure we'll talk about it. But I mean, they the, like like they should, though. The, that's what I like, though. They they believe in their team. Um, you know, Nebraska fans will will they'll they'll uh, they'll get on you. But I think they're a little bit more like reserved like they'll yeah. they're a little bit more like thanks for coming you know like if yeah. you ever see like if you ever see like a, a a team that we play and like we beat them bad or which we haven't done a lot in the past years but if we beat a team they'll comment under and say like thanks for coming and like whatever so oh. it's just a different vibe it's, it's a different a, vibe yeah. Colorado and Nebraska but hey I'm I'm all for it at the end of the day well, here's the thing. Let's talk about the vibe, right? Because, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I'm going to say it because I think it's disgusting. I hate that people are trying to make this a culture war. Like, I don't think that that's right. fair. And I think it's almost setting up some, I'll just call it what it is, setting up some racial undertones that I don't really think we should be trying to go down. Like, let's leave it football and let's leave the culture war out of it. But Colorado fans are newer, right? They followed mm-hmm. Coach Prime over or 
They're super excited for Coach Prime to see what's going on. And listen, the only people that are supporting and loving on Coach Prime are not just Colorado fans. Other people that have other right. teams are also cheering for Coach Prime to be successful. So that's not – this question is not because of that. I'm curious to know – You've had some videos lately that I feel like are just going off the charts because you're talking about Colorado. You're being honest about what you're seeing on film and you're backing it up with the things that you're seeing. How has it been for you? Like how have your interactions <laughs> been over the past probably what two or three days with the Colorado fan base, with Colorado fans and what they they're saying to you? Yeah. So it's been interesting because when people like people try to take personal shots and I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. But um, when you look at like what I'm saying, the only thing I'm really going off of is like what they're putting out on the field and like what the, the tape or the film says. So um, that's kind of like how I like to look at it. I could give my personal opinion, but like that wouldn't really mean much. And I don't think people want to hear what I have to say just myself. Right. I'm yeah. not that cool. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I mean, my mentions in Twitter have been uh, been. Yeah, I, I, I've definitely turned my I don't have my notifications on for Twitter for sure. Um, and YouTube, I've, I've had to take them off, too. Um, people are people are just interesting. And it's, and it's not to be like Colorado fans. I just think everyone got got some bad fruits, you know, some. Yeah. Uh, yeah so that's that's a fair assessment. So that's, you know what, kudos to you for being really lovely with that answer. You know what, I, I respect it. I respect it because you didn't have to be. So kudos to you. Um, what is something that you feel like Nebraska that like I would know just by looking at the team or I wouldn't know that's like a Nebraska thing or that you're seeing about Nebraska or that you know about the program that you feel like people aren't seeing or aren't paying attention to? Um. It's a good question. Um, I would just say the way the city is responding. Um, yeah, that was, I mean, it was obviously a home opener and you usually don't play at home. You know, the past few years we played in uh, Illinois, Ireland, uh, or not Illinois. Uh, where did we play last year? Uh, where did we play? We played so oh we played Minnesota we played Minnesota Ireland and then Illinois so we haven't had a home opener and I've heard that I was at the game but I was right down the street I heard like the environment and that it was one of the louder games um, and more engaged um, that's what what what's happening right now there's been like a sliver of hope with Dylan Riola and um, and there's been a there's been a, a, a different atmosphere just around the city and the talk and the social media and all the different accounts that cover Nebraska and 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 I, national eyes are catching Nebraska, which yes. uh, add, adds juice to the team. I mean that that you want you want uh, to know every time you go out on Saturday that the whole world's watching. That adds mm -hmm. that some people think that's pressure. Like that's that's a compliment. That's a that's a privilege. So yeah, I love that. So you alluded to it a little bit earlier. So let's get into last year's game. I think that, and we talked about this a little bit before, I always tell people that, yes, you look at the past to try to kind of see where you think you might go, unless the past is a little bit murky. And the way that the game went last year, in my personal opinion, basically because we didn't even get to see a lot of Nebraska, because bless his heart, the quarterback just couldn't even, <laughs> you know. Right hand off the ball properly. And when you can't run a play or run an offense or do anything, it's really hard to make sense of what you're dealing with. But the defense still played very, very well, considering the, the, the situations they had put themselves into. So as you think about this, I have my own opinions. And like you said, I won't share my opinions because nobody wants to hear them. How do you think <laughs> last year's game impacts this year's game, if at all? Yeah, so – uh, I know for sure as a coaching staff, you're for sure going to go back and watch the tape, obviously, right? You're going to analyze the things um, and you're kind of, you know, you're going to play a, a game of, of kind of chess right now where, you know, you're, you're thinking, you're anticipating what they're going to see on film and you're going to combat it. So you're th trying to think like three moves ahead right now. But if you just go back and look at the game for what it was, you know, like you said, we had a quarterback who, you know, didn't really know, you know, did, I would just say there was confidence issues. There was turnover issues. Um, 
you know, the con- it was just the confidence was there wasn't there. And w- when your confidence is gone, it's it's pretty much over. Um, so, you know, turnovers issues. You had about five turnovers, putting the def- defense in a really, really bad spot, a really, really bad mm-hmm. spot. So um, looking at that, you know, it, it, if you look at the first half, it should, really should have been 14, 13, mm-hmm. Nebraska. So. If you now you take that in consideration, you know, we go and fumble like three times in the next half. Uh, so it, it kind of is a skewed, a skewed, uh, skewed. I don't even know the word, but it's just skewed to look at it, it and tell say the whole story. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so so now you you look at where that defense went after that. They they ended up being a top 15 defense in the nation. Mm-hmm. You know, like even the Minnesota game before, they weren't really they weren't really dominant, you know. Um, and then they go play Colorado and eh, a little bit. They go come play home, you know, La Tech, still a little trouble. And then they hit stride against Illinois. Um, and then they just they just take off, right? And so now this defense is completely different. Um, so it, it would be it would be wrong and it would be immature if Colorado um, goes in there and thinks they're playing the same defense. They know it. You know, you just got to turn on the mm-hmm. tape and cut it on. Like, and and I would expect Nebraska to have a whole new whole new game plan to stop. You know, obviously Jimmy Horn, uh, Lejante Stewart, uh, Travis Hunter, Webster, uh, we- uh, Webster, Lejante yeah. Webster, and yeah. uh, number fourteen Shepard. I, I like him too. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously Shador. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's fair. And I think sometimes I tell people like, I get it. I feel like we do this as humans. We go pick the thing that we want and we apply that, but we don't pick everything and apply everything because yeah, you can, the offense wasn't great, but the defense was good. And you Mm -hmm. can't fault the defense for giving up points when they freaking giving the ball right back as soon as they get off the field. So it's like, you know, again, one of those things where I tell people stats tell a story, but they don't always tell the whole story. So, you know, take that or leave it. So, when this game is over, I'll do two things. If Nebraska wins, it will be because of what? And if Nebraska loses, oh. it will be because of what? I like this question. So, if Nebraska wins, it will be because it will be because um, ah, mixed. I'm I'm a 50-50 split right now. It will be because okay. it will be because Dylan Raul plays at a high level and executes okay. the way he did last Saturday. Slash defense contains either Jimmy Horn or Travis Hunter. They just need to take one of them away. Take just one. one. Just okay. one. Just take That's one valid. of them away. Yeah. You're the, you're the first th- person I've heard say that, by the way. Really? Yeah. And I, I actually agree with you. I think yeah, I think so many times, like I said, we're focused on the whole, but it's like if you take one, that's enough. All you need, yeah, is, and, all you need is to remove one. And the one I would take away is would be Jimmy Horn. I think he's the biggest threat to the offense. Obviously, Travis Hunter, but the thing about like Travis Hunter, he's I I would expect, and this might be a hot take, I don't know, but I would expect him to take a couple less reps on each, one side of the ball. Just a couple. Listen, Which I don't know I, if it's gonna happen. I know but I've been preaching this since January, so because I, I, I just see on tape, it's it's really hard for it, when he takes plays off. It's re, it, it can hurt the defense, especially if they're you know playing man. I don't think they're gonna play man man as much, but like it can hurt the defense a lot. So you know it's kind of like a, like a catch twenty two. But anyways, yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. Listen, I've been preaching since January. Like, he doesn't have to play. Listen, I could go on. I I hear you. I agree with you, especially in these games where there's a ton of energy and just it's a, it's a lot. And I feel like, you know, help help him help the team. But, again, it falls on deaf ears. Everyone's like, he's trying to swing I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, have him be out there. Whatever. Right. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you is um, a lot of people – so – when you're in the CU space, you kind of hear everybody. I always say it's an echo chamber of information where somebody says something, somebody agrees with it, and then it just bounces around the whole fan base. One of the things that I'm hearing people say today, because every day it's been something new, is you all secondary is not that good. And I think it's because they saw the deep ball against UTEP. And obviously you see that and you think, oh, we can do that. But how was it the rest of the game? <laughs> yeah, so it's it's interesting. I mean, that was the – I'm trying to think right now. That was the only play over – in the passing game over 15 yards, I believe. I think, so that I was think, the only one. only one. 
yeah, I thought so too. But I'm like, but again, maybe I'm not, maybe I don't see something. Maybe, maybe there is something right. to this. But- yeah, so I I think that I think that particular position playing this like three three five defense that particular position that slot corner, um, he has his hands full. It's Malcolm Harzog, um, Jr. Um, but I mean, you you go two drives later, he gets a pick. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, he bounces back right away. So uh, yeah, I mean, if we're if we're compa- if we're saying you know UNL doesn't have a good a good secondary. If we go through, I mean, Tommy Hill's projected to be a first round draft pick. Um, you know, the, on the, on the other side of him, you have Marquise Buford. He was a starting safety for the past two years. Um, he's converted corner. So I could see maybe, you know, them saying, Oh, we could attack them. I, I could understand that. Um, you have Deshaun Singleton, you know, six, four, you know, two fifteen uh, safety. Um, you got Isaac Gifford, honorable mention, big 10, Um, and then I believe the other safety, oh, is Malcolm Harzog. So, uh, when you look at the guys, obviously, I mean, you don't have a Travis Hunter out there, right? But I think, yeah, nobody does. He's the only one. Right. (laughs) Um, but I mean, you do have good talent. Um, but I would say if there was a weakness to the defense, it would be the DB. So that's where the, that's where, when I talk about containing Shador and getting in his face, that's why I say it to help the, the, help the DBs out. Yeah. Yeah, I respect that. And just one last question. Um, how how are you all liking Isaiah Nayor? As a Texas fan, he, he, I understand I think everybody understands why he left. Everyone's cheering for him, you know, to to be to to do great, to be great, to be amazing, all the things. How is he how how do you like having him in your offense? <laughs> No, yeah, I think he adds a, a interesting piece. I mean, some people think he's gonna. Uh, one 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 uh, show I was on the other day predicted that he was gonna be a a top uh, twenty receiver in the nation. Ooh, I so I mean, yeah. So I mean, I, I'm high on him. I think he adds speed to his offense. Obviously, being like six three, you know, two. I think he's around two twenty right now. So mm-hmm. you know, adds speed, adds length. Um, adds veteran presence, um, adds sure hands. Um, and then it, ad- it adds like a, he kind of, I could tell he kind of got that like dog, like uh, confident, not cocky, but super confident right in that line. Um, and so that's what, that's what you need is surrounding a, a freshman quarterback. You need guys that are polished. You don't need guys that are going to learn with Dylan. You need guys that are going to teach Dylan. Yeah. I love that. So is there anything else that we should know heading into this matchup? Is there anything that I think on your tweet, you said of your assessment, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you said discipline is going to be a thing for Colorado. Cause I think you did a Colorado yeah. takeaway. I think you said the, yeah. the, I think you said defense, obviously keep it away from 12 and five. You said something about uh, Shador's pocket presence, which I think you've already said that here. And there was something else that you said that I was like, this is a good right, I was, Probably talking about the O line. Um, yes. 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 Yeah. So I was talking about the O line, and I was just, I w- I was being a, probably a little critical um, when I was doing the film. Now that I look back on it, some people were saying uh, they did pretty good. I didn't see it at all. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. So I I didn't really see improvement from last year. I mean, that, I know that was the area where they needed to fix. I mean, everyone across the nation in college football knew that Colorado's O line was terrible, and we saw like NDSU last week um, really like dominate the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. You know, you, in the past you can game. Tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think, I think the problem is is everyone's like, yeah, we only gave up one sack, but I think it was Joel Klatt. Somebody said, "Yeah, but yeah, there's thirty so percent, thirty percent pressure," and it's like that's not good. Like, Mm-mm. but but again, I listen. I get it. It's touchy. It's like you know, we want. I, I keep telling people, Colorado can be a better team than they were last year, and they can still need some improvement. That's okay. Listen, I'm a Texas fan. Okay, I think we're better than we were last year, but we still need to improve too. So it's okay. It's totally right. fine. So no, anyways, yeah. I- I agree with you. I think the I think the O line was the piece that they need to fix, and it's still question mark. And moving forward, it's like okay, if if you want to elevate to to the next level, I know Shador not coming back this year, next mm-hmm. year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, if you can develop the room within the year, 
um, that would be awesome. And maybe you get a few wins, but if you don't develop this room and it stays as is, uh, you know, you'd be lucky to get, you know, five wins. And, and yeah. I'm, and I'm being, I'm being real. I, you know, no, you look at real. team last that is year. Real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real. Especially going in, especially if you drop this, drop this game to Nebraska and then you go in, like you're going into the big 12 and these teams you know, Great point. clock management, all of that stuff. Like, yeah, you have to be able to sustain drives and you have to be able to have an offensive line that can do something. So, yeah, this this isn't the Pac-12 anymore. This isn't yeah. the Pac-12 anymore. Yeah, <laughs> this is grinded out big boy football. Is what I think. Hey, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you talking to me. Like I said, I literally randomly reached out like on a prayer and you responded. So kudos to you for that. I very much appreciate you. Are you going to the game or are you watching this one at home? Um, I might, they, there's, that's awesome. They have alumni section. So I, I might be at the game, but I also really want to get my video uploaded right after the game. So <laughs> I might be selfishly staying home, but I mean, is what it is. Are you, do you play like the first game? Like, are you one of those that is like, I want to get my thoughts out and, and I want to state what I say, and then I'll circle back around and maybe refresh. Or do you put the first thing out and that's how you feel? How do you usually do your content? Um, as of right now, what I'm thinking, and that's a great question, actually, um, what I'm thinking is I'm just going to put it out ASAP and then I'll probably, I'll probably lock in after, especially if, if Nebraska wins, like I want to be one of the first people to react to it and break it down. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's really about okay. being first for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why everybody has a different strategy. Like right. I usually like to kind of wait, um, but that's just me, but I don't break down film. I suck at that. So. I, I watch people break down film for me. I'm like, how the hell did you see that? Like I'm <laughs> focused on the random guy who has nothing to do with the play because my brain isn't trick isn't functioning that way. You awesome. know a lot about football though. Well, you know, what's funny. So I always do this. I always say, this isn't about me. And then I start talking about myself. I, I am not an X's and O. Like if you said to me, how did you defend man coverage? Couldn't answer the question. I have no freaking clue. Don't ask. Me. <laughs> but if I'm watching the game, I can tell you they're in man. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you who didn't do what they were supposed to do. Like, mm -hmm. I know the linebacker is usually watching the quarterback. I mm -hmm. know, like, you know what I mean? So, like, certain things I can, I, I can tell you, but I can't regurgitate it to you in a way that you would be like, wait, what? And I'd be like, the guy on the right. Because that, that's not my skill set. So I keep saying I'm going to get good at that. But I kind of like being in this space where I'm not overly critical. I just get to state my opinion. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, if you watch my videos, I'll teach you. You know what? Let me tell you this. <laughs> For this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch your videos with the intent to learn. The ones yeah. that you put out this week and even the ones that you put out after the game. And I will get back to you and I will say, I, this is what I learned. <laughs> there we go. So, so you better not be wrong. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I appreciate I appreciate you. If Nebraska wins and you want to come back on here and talk trash, you're more than welcome to come back at any time. And do you have an NFL team or do you just like Nebraska football? I don't. I don't. But I okay. know that Texas is playing at Michigan. So You're playing at that Michigan would be interesting. This week. Yeah. And you know what's funny? It's kind of a similar matchup because right. in a way – Right, because Michigan obviously gets rid of all their talent, wins a national championship, has a great all line last year, all the things. But this year, their quarterback is new. You know, their offensive line is kind of, I don't want to say it's in shambles, but it's not like it was last year. And then you have Texas rolling in where it's like, you know, top rated offensive line, top rated quarterback, top rated offense, top rated this, top rated that. But we don't know really who our D line is. We think we know because we think we know, but we don't really know because our guys went to the NFL. So if we stop the run, we win the game. If we don't, I can't call it. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, we're on paper, we're better than Michigan. We should win the game, mm -hmm. but it's football right. and you just never know what's going to happen. So I know that's right. Yeah. Keep me in your thoughts and prayers. <laughs> 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 Anyways, well, thanks for having this conversation with me. No, this is awesome. I appreciate you coming on. I mean, I appreciate you. I usually say that. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on. <laughs> yeah, of course. The creatures of habit. Yeah. I love it.